Support for this episode comes from Jivoke Hypo Pen. Jivoke Hypo Pen is a ready-to-use rescue pen for treating very low blood sugar in people with diabetes ages 2 and above. If you take insulin or sulfonylureas, you're at risk for your blood sugar going too low. Low blood sugar emergencies can happen unexpectedly and they demand quick action. You need a safety net when it matters most. Be ready to treat very low blood sugar with Jivoke Hypo Pen. Find out more? Go to jivoglucagon.com slash Stacy. That's jivoglucagon.com slash S-T-A-C-E-Y. Jivoke shouldn't be used if you have a tumor in the gland on top of your kidneys called pheochromocytoma or if you have a tumor in your pancreas called insulinoma. Visit jivoglucagon.com slash risk for safety information. This is Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. This week, let's talk about diabetes summer camp. It is probably still cold where you live, but now is the time to start planning. Your local camp may be open for registration now or in the next couple of weeks. My guest is Dr. Gregory Fox, medical director of Camp Shorefire in Rhode Island. He's going to answer a lot of common questions about sending your kid to camp, and he'll also talk about camp views. This is a system that lets staff monitor every single kid's CGM in one place at all times. This podcast is not intended as medical advice. If you have those kinds of questions, please contact your healthcare provider. Welcome to another week of the show. I'm so glad to have you here. You know we aim to educate and inspire about diabetes with a focus on people who use insulin. Mom's Night Out Charlotte is coming up this week if you're listening as this episode first goes live. The event is uh, Friday, February 2nd and Saturday the 3rd. And if history is any guide, there's going to be a lot of small fires to put out before then. (laughs) If you still want to come, I mean, it is really last minute, but I don't want to turn anybody away. Reach out and we'll see what we can do. And three more Mom's Night Out events this year. All the information at diabetes-connections.com and click on the events tab. And a few people have told me that Mom's Night Out is like what diabetes camp must be like for our kids, you know, a place where everybody gets it. And it really is time to talk about camp. Registrations will open very soon, if not open already. And a lot of these camps do fill up quickly, especially for particular age groups. I am taking part in a webinar all about camp coming up next week. That is with Anna Sabino from Finding Smiles Coaching. And that is Wednesday, February 7th at noon Eastern. There's a link in our show notes and also on social media to sign up. You don't have to attend live, although it's a lot of fun if you do. We will take questions live. But if you register, we will send you the recording after. And Anna is terrific. In addition to her coaching, she lives with type 1, and a lot of her experiences were formed at camp. I'm there to give the perspective of the mom, you know, who sent her son at age 7 and really watched him thrive. Diabetes camp was instrumental in Benny's independence for sure. All right, Dr. Gregory Fox, my guest this week, has been the medical director of Camp Surefire for 20 years. He's a pediatric endo, and his wife, Allie, is the executive director of the camp. I met them as part of the planning for Mom's Night Out in Providence, Rhode Island, last year. But I knew Dr. Fox would be great to talk to, uh, not just for a regular episode about camp. You know, I've learned that most parents cannot get enough information. They have lots and lots of questions. But also because Camp Surefire uses camp views. I did a whole episode about this, and I'm going to link this up in the show notes. In a nutshell, it is a software program that lets the camp staff see every kid's CGM numbers at the same time in the same place. It's an electronic medical record application that is designed specifically for diabetes camps. We talked about it kind of at a high level last year, but what does it look like in practice? My conversation with Dr. Fox is right after this. Take control of your diabetes with a broad range of diabetes management supplies from Edgepark. The latest diabetes supplies and continuous glucose monitors from top brands simplify blood sugar management. Edgepark accepts most insurance plans and Medicare and Medicare Advantage cover certain devices. Plus, Edgepark takes care of the insurance paperwork to make ordering as seamless as possible. Go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Edgepark logo to learn more about Edgepark's diabetes supplies and CGM devices. Dr. Fox, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you making some time. Happy to be here. Okay, so lots of questions always about camp. But before I, I jump in, as an overview, what do you think diabetes camp is 
for? Like, how do you think it helps families? Um, well, in, in, a, in a few ways. So I would say the most important thing is, you know, giving kids a community and families a community. Uh, we treat our camp, uh, Camp Surefire, as if it's a family. So, you know, once you come to camp, we treat you like you're our own children and welcome you into the family. So creating a community of kids that have diabetes, uh, that are going through the same day-to-day um, management and, and troubles, thinking about diabetes is, is kind of like the key. And then, you know, while they're there, we take advantage of our time to try to teach them a little bit about diabetes. So learning is probably the second thing. And part of that is, you know, formal education programs that we do. And, you know, I teach, you know, at, at every level from the littlest kids up into the staff about, you know, type 1 diabetes and how it works and where it came from and how to manage it. And then, you know, there's a, 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 even more learning, you know, from peers and the older kids. So, you know, kids come in, they may be new at diabetes or they may have been doing it for a little while, but they can, um, you know, see how the other kids are managing it. You know, maybe see a technology that they had never seen before that they get interested in. You know, the little kids teach the staff, you know, how things work and how life is uh, with diabetes. And, the, you know, the staff can help guide them in terms of, you know, maybe giving a shot for the first time or putting their pump on independently for the first time and that kind of thing. Uh, education is the, the second big part of it. And the third is respite for the, for the parents. And so, uh, as you know, being the parent of somebody with diabetes is a, it's a 24 or seven, you know, job and, uh, and stress in your life. And so part of our goal is to give parents a little break, let them know that, you know, we got them covered. They can take a breath, take a vacation, you know, go out to dinner and not have to worry about, you know, what's going on at home uh, with their child's diabetes. How young? What's your youngest camper group? We start at seven, yeah. which is crazy young if you think about a kid with a medical condition going to camp. But, you know, the kids, the little guys do fantastic. We used to go as young as five and we've had a couple of those over the years. But, you know, we kind of settled in at seven, which is, a you know, kids are relatively independent and, you know, kind of the day to day stuff. But those kids are great because they play, play, play all day and then they crash at night. And so they sleep. <laughs> yeah. My son started going to diabetes camp at age seven and it, he was totally ready. He was totally excited. And it was a great experience. I know not every kid is ready at that age, but I'm, I'm glad you take them that young because when they're ready, they are ready. And it's a yeah, wonderful when they're ready, time. They're ready. And some kids are, you know. I have three, four-year-olds that are chomping at the bit in my practice, um, and, <laughs> and we try to hold on because we want to, you know, we want when they do show up them to have a successful experience, yeah. and you know, so that we can, you know, just give them the best time and get them hooked in, uh, hooked in for the rest of the rest of their uh, childhood into into young adulthood. It's really interesting to get that perspective of doing this for as long as you have for those twenty-three years. Because I'm thinking back, you know, when my son was diagnosed in two thousand six. Everybody was super excited because he, as a toddler, he was, they had just approved Lantus for toddlers. Our endo was like, you don't have to worry about NPH and regular, which you didn't even understand what he was talking about. You know, you don't have to do an exchange system. You can use fast acting and long acting. And we thought this was the most amazing thing ever. And of course, fast forward now, 17 years later, there's been a lot of changes. At camp, what are some of the big changes you have seen? I mean, I know there's a lot to talk about here, but you think about 2001 to now what kids are using. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well, when we first started, we, you know, everybody was on NPH and either regular Humalog. So, you know, we were mixing two different insulins into a syringe to give injections at breakfast, dinner, and then at bedtime. So we only injected kids three times a day, but each kid needed to line up and, you know, I needed to clear before cloudy, uh, draw them into a syringe and uh, with my nurse and, and, and give each kid an individual injection. With that came, you know, multiple snacks because of irregular kind of peaks of insulin throughout the day. You didn't have a steady delivery. So our schedule was crazy. It was breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack. So we had to eat six times a day uh, to protect kids against peaks of insulin that they had, you know, they received, you know, six, seven hours ago, you know, with breakfast. And, and we had to protect them overnight against a peak that was happening you know, while they were sleeping uh, with a bedtime snack. So that was, it was really hard that way. But with the technologies, Lantus was the first one. So that was able to give a basal insulin, you know, that lasted 24 hours. So it allowed us to be a little bit more flexible in the timing and give us a little more playtime and less time schlepping back for snacks, um, <laughs> which was great. And then, you know, even at the beginning, most kids had 
needles and syringe, you know, syringes and vials. And now, you know, then they invented pens, which was huge. So it allowed for the delivery of insulin a little bit better. And then, you know, we kind of started to get the wave of kids with pumps. And so, you know, when I first started, nobody was on a pump. Now, I think every kid but one was on a pump last year at our camp. You know, that technology, you know, really kind of emerged over the you know, early 2000s. You know, now most kids are on a pump and and now most kids are actually on a closed loop system. Mm-hmm. So, you know, starting maybe, I guess, seven or eight years ago is the emergence of the continuous glucose monitor. So Medtronic had one at first and then Dexcom is probably the the one that we use the most. So being able to have real-time data on, you know, what your blood sugar was, whether you're trending up or down, uh, you know, that was absolutely tremendous and kind of a game changer for us. If you think about it before we were checking kids, you know, the standard schedule would be, you know, at each one of those meals and snacks, maybe in the middle of the night, you know, six or seven times a day, blood sugar checks. But with a CGM, it's checking your blood sugar every five minutes. So you get 288 checks a day, which is it's a totally different different ball game. Yeah. And now uh, with the emergence of the closed loop, you know, everybody is pumped, is talking to their CGM and making adjustments, you know, throughout the day, you know, backing off on insulin if it needs to, increasing insulin if the blood sugar runs a little bit higher for whatever reason. And so that's um, a game changer in just terms of general management, but also at diabetes camp, we can rest a little bit easier at night because we know that uh, the technology is doing some of our work for us. I didn't then, mean to take you all the way down memory lane there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I, go ahead. I cut you off there. No, we're almost there. So, the, I mean, in this year, we we started with, uh, you know, Camp Fuse, which was a, a medical record system or a, or a CGM monitoring system. So to look at everybody all at the same time in real time, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, that is amazing. Let's talk about Camp Fuse. This is a system that I learned about a year or so ago. We did a whole episode on the people behind it. Can you talk a little bit about how you use that? Because my understanding is that it, there are a few different ways. Like you said, there's it's kind of a, a way to keep track of paperwork, but it's also a way to look at all of the CGMs at camp. So how do you use it at Camp Surefire? This was our first year. We did kind of a beta version. We have a, um, a team we call it, we still call it winter camp, even though it happened in April this year. We did a beta version with about 20 kids um, for a weekend to kind of get it rolling. And then, you know, we rolled it out with our, you know, 75, 80 kids over the over the summertime. And so it did two main things for us. One is it kind of took over the old kind of paperwork version of, you know, kind of tracking everybody's blood sugars all the time. So at every meal, we had these sheets, you know, in triplicate where we'd write down their sugar and their carbs and what their insulin dose would be. And you know, we try to keep track in between meals if they had highs or lows, you know, so that we could make adjustments each day on their care based on how they did um, in a camp setting in the previous 24 hours. And, you know, with Camp Views, that's all kind of automated into an app. So it was pretty awesome. We had each medical staff had an iPad and we were able to, you know, type in the carbs, type in, you know, we knew what their blood sugar was from their Dexcom or from the system itself. And then, uh, you know, make treatment decisions and then um, it would be much easier to kind of see everything as we kind of evaluated each kid each day that way. So that was, it replaced an old paper system, which I still have, you know, blood sugar recordings, you know, file cabinet from 20 years ago at some place. <laughs> that was big, but the biggest part was that we were able to, uh, you know, look at every kid kind of simultaneously. So we made sure that every kid was on a Dexcom because it is a Dexcom driven system. And so we partnered with the local um, Dexcom rep and uh, she and her partner came out to camp on the first day and the kids made sure that everybody was entered into the system and and functioning properly. The kids that weren't on Dexcom, they brought a bunch of G7s and put them on. Yeah. Um, So the kids that weren't using that technology were able to for the week. Um, We even had a couple of kids that were using other types of technologies that we also put Dexcom. So they had two different CGMs to (laughs) compare. over the course of the week and a couple of different sites. But with that, I had a big, you know, I had a widescreen TV that basically had a, um, a color chart. So um, it was red, green, and orange, I believe. So, or yeah, red, no, I guess it was red, yellow, and green. And so the kids that were low were one color, um, under 80, 
the kids that were green were a uh, different color. And then the um, kids that were uh, high were, were a different color. And I could see everybody in real time, all 75, 80 kids, what their blood sugar was, which direction they were trending. And then, you know, on the system on my phone or on my iPad, I could hone in on any kid and say, you know, how we've we been doing for the last hour or so, you know, whether there was, you know, something going on, you know, related to the last meal that they ate, for example. Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. So even in the middle of the night, while everyone was sleeping, uh, we were watching them, uh, watching their blood sugar trends. That sounds amazing. It also sounds overwhelming. What's your reaction? Like, was this, this I'm imagining this was very exciting. But were you also kind of, this is so much information. Like, I'm trying to think of looking at a wall of numbers like that. Yeah, no, I'm going to say exciting more than overwhelming for me. I, you're talking to a guy that had to, you know, sneak up on kids in the middle of the night with a flashlight in my mouth to check their blood sugar at two o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah. And so to be able to look up and see where everybody was at was great. Yeah, it is a lot of information. But the good news is that any given time, most of the kids are right in the green where you want them. You're really only focusing on the kids that are either disconnecting for whatever reason, you know, are running high or running low. So it just kind of really hones it down. So you know where to focus your attention or where your staff needs to focus their attention. I love it. That's great. Any changes? Do you plan to make any changes to how you use Camp Views this year, either for your your teens or, you know, your winter program or for your summer program? Uh, No, just kind of working out the kinks. So, you know, part of the, you know, part of the system relies on, you know, internet connections and connections of, um, you know, kind of the device to a phone to the World Wide Web. So, positioning and getting stronger um, hotspot Wi-Fi type of stuff, you know, Mm. so that we can even be more fluid, I think would be the key there. But, you know, they've set up a a really nice system. The support was um, absolutely amazing at the level from Nevada, but they also, um, you know, sent up, uh, you know, one of their staff from Alabama who was now a lifelong family member of Camp Surefire. We expect (laughs) to have him back next year and the year after and the year after. And, I'm going to send them a Christmas card as well. Love it. Let's talk about camp in general, if we could. I run a large Facebook group in the, for parents in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. We have wonderful camps here. And, you know, I get the same questions every year. I'll give the example of this. When my son was seven and we took him to camp, I, I was very worried. I wanted to stay close by. You know, I wanted to call everybody. And the second year, we took a trip <laughs> across the country. The third year, we went to Europe. So I got more confident. I assume that's pretty typical. What do you tell nervous first-time parents? Right back to our conversation. But first, Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Omnipod. You know I'm a big fan of choice when it comes to diabetes technology. I get so excited when there's something new. If you live with diabetes, you deserve to find the best fit for you. That's just one reason I'm working with Omnipod, to help spread the word about what makes it so easy to test their system out. If you want to try an insulin pump or see what life without tubes is all about, you can try Omnipod even if your current tubed pump is in warranty. Really, you heard that right. And if it's not right for you, no problem. Omnipod does not tie you down with a contract or a tube. Go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Omnipod logo. Terms and conditions apply for full safety risk information and free trial terms and conditions. Visit omnipod.com slash diabetes connections. Well, first we start with, we got you, you know, I mean, the first call actually goes to my wife, Allison, who is the executive director of the camp and she's not medical by training, but you know, she's been involved with camp as long as I have. And so she knows how it's run, how safe it is. She knows the quality of all of the staff that we have kind of hired and trained and retained all over all these years. So from that very first phone call says, you know, we got you. This is a safe place. You know, we take this very, very seriously. We're going to give your kid an absolutely amazing time. We're going to give you a little bit of a, of a respite. And then, you know, opportunities for families to talk with, particularly our medical staff, because if our medical staff has evolved over the last 10 or 15 years to a, a core group of seven of us, that average, you know, I guess at this year, over 11 years of camp experience at Camp Surefire. And plus, we're adding and training other professionals, doctors, nurses, pharmacists. And so the amount of high quality medical care that you get at our camp is kind of 
kind of speaks for itself, I think. And when you're talking about safety and and once parents actually get on the uh, on the campus for an open house, for example, or when they're dropping off, we run a pretty tight ship and our kids are having an absolute blast. So I think just the comfort level there speaks for itself. But so really, it starts with that first call, phone call to my wife, honestly. <laughs> One of the concerns that I'm seeing more and more parents have is, will you run them high at camp because it's safer? There's so many kids, you know, the food is is higher carb, maybe. Can you speak to that? You, you know, you mentioned already that most kids are in range a lot, which is nice to see at camps. But I think for some, that is a reality of, of running a little higher for the safety. I think it's a, a camp philosophy. So, you know, I, as a, you know, as an endocrinologist, I've seen, you know, I take care of kids that go to multiple different camps besides my own um, or have over the years. I think certain camps just prefer to run you a little bit higher. And, you know, kind of change your settings accordingly. I'd say that's becoming less and less of a trend, particularly Mm -hmm. with closed loop systems, because they do have safety measures to keep you from running low, low, low. And honestly, if you try to run a little bit higher, they're going to be fighting against it um, because the, the system will kick in that you're running high. So, for example, you know, in the past, you know, at nighttime, you know, we would have, you know, snack you know, kind of in the evening time. And then we had protocols for kids that were running low, you know, at 10 p.m. or, you know, midnight that they would get some, you know, carbohydrates to kind of boost them up. So if they were only 100, maybe we wanted closer to 150 while they slept. But we found pretty quickly when we got back from COVID and everybody was on a on a closed loop system is when we did that, not only did the system fight back, it actually generated lows. Oh, wow. So... We would have a kid that was 100 and we would say, all right, we're going to give them, you know, 15 grams of carbs to kind of bump them up into the range we want. And then it goes up and then. Poof. And so those are the kids that we're treating the lows, whereas the ones we just left alone were perfectly fine. One of the things that I think my son really benefited from at diabetes camp was doing things there and trying things there. He did not try first at home, mostly because I was doing it for him. But things like changing his infusion set for the first time. I know a lot of kids do their first injections at camp. Talk to me a little bit about kind of the magic that you guys do to get kids to to take those first steps. Yeah, well, I, I don't know that I'm always involved in that because usually what it is is, you know, one kid becomes friends with another one and then they see that that kid's been doing stuff. And then, you know, there you can see they're looking kind of curious at a meal time or at an injection time or whatever. And then, you know, it's usually one of our counselors or one of our medical staff who says, hey, do you want to give it a try? And they, mm. you, know, it's, it's, you know, it's a little bit of a process, but that's usually how it happens. It kind of you can see the curiosity in their eyes is kind of the cue. And we actually train our staff to kind of look for that. And then once you kind of get that little nudge, they're trying something in a very, very safe spot. You know, if it doesn't work the first time, we do it again or we, you know, or we cover them and do it for, and do it for them you know, with their permission, of course. But when kids do make a milestone like that, we definitely celebrate it. So we, uh, you know, if we're at dinner and, you know, somebody gets their first injection, everybody hears about it. Everybody, has, you know, hoots and hollers and collapse and, and has a great um, welcome to that uh, level of diabetes care. It's kind of fun. That's really great. What are some of the, the the issues that you see at camp? I mean, I'm thinking like, you know, is it overnight? Overnight sounds like it's getting a lot better. Is it kids in the pool? Is it kids being super active in ways they aren't at home? Like, what are some of the the times when the medical director is in action the most? Yeah, I would say overall, it is a big change in activity level for most of the kids that we have. So um, just the world right now is a relatively sedentary world. And so they get to camp and we're go, go, go. We have Mm. a lot of fun activities. You know, we are swimming, we're rock climbing, we're boating, we're playing soccer and capture the flag and all sorts of that kind of stuff. So, um, so our, our main risk is going to be lows like that person, you know, like right at the fields is a, is a level kids are popping off during activities to get treated for lows. And then, you know, then we're watching them super carefully at nighttime, particularly those first couple of nights. But like I said earlier, you know, we're learning from those kids. So the kids that are running lower than we would expect, we're adjusting those those insulin doses as much as as much as we can. And we're just kind of anticipating, you know, we know the kids that are going all out. Uh, we have an extra set of eyes on them. So, you know, we have 
protections at every level from, you know, our counselor to, to kid ratio is about one counselor for every two kids. So mm -hmm. there's no, uh, you know, there's a lot of eyes on these kids to watch that. So I would say, you know, overnight we're watching carefully, although, you know, knock on wood, we've been very lucky. So, you know, we really haven't had any major uh, low blood sugar emergencies. Actually, the, the main medical emergencies that we've had in terms of needing to give glucagon have mostly been in our staff. Oh, wow. Because... You know, they're also more active than they are usual. And, you know, even though we warn them about this, you know, we have to, we have to tell them, you know, you need to take care of yourself during this whole process. And so I can tell you over, you know, whatever, 23 years, uh, I can still count on one hand the amount of glucagon injections that I've given. And I would, I think all of them were somebody that was 16 or older. Wow. Uh, and, and most most of which were staff. The one the one thing that we had that came up years ago that we learned from and we still use as a teaching point is uh we had a dietitian that miscalculated the carbohydrates on a on pizza. Oh. And so we dosed the whole camp for her calculation, which was inaccurate. And so every, just about every single kid got too much uh, insulin for their pizza. The one exception was the one cabin who had their nurse had two boys with uh, type one diabetes who said, I don't feel comfortable giving these doses. Wow. <laughs> and she underdosed <laughs> um, her cabin. So, you know, here we are at, you know, we had lunch at noon and at about 1230, all of a sudden everybody just started dropping like flies in terms of their blood sugars. And so we, uh, we you know, we got a couple of cases of juice and had a party out on the field <laughs> to make sure that everybody got enough carbohydrates to compensate for the, um, uh, for the insulin that they had. So, you know, that was, you know, the situation that unanticipated, but as soon as we figured it out, we were able to, you know, do the math and yeah. make sure that everybody was safe. I heard a few years ago about a diabetes camp where a stomach bug really went through. And, you know, this is well before COVID. And, and one of my friends was like, I would immediately pick my child up. And I'm thinking, I can't imagine my child being in safer hands as long as the staff didn't have the stomach bug too. Right. I really yeah. feel like you got, you know, you, you know, so yeah, much that happened to us everything. about 10 years ago. Oh. Yeah. It's awful. It's absolutely <laughs> awful. There's, yeah, no, it was, I think it was pre Zofran too, honestly. Oh no. Um, now we use Zofran, you know, pretty regularly. It's been a, a total game changer in my general practice, general endocrine practice, but as well as at camp. Yeah. yeah. Because you can really, most kids, you can, you can stop the, the vomiting part because that's a, you know, as, as you know, as a parent, it's hard when they're vomiting and you, and particularly if they're vomiting and low, it's a, it's a lose, lose situation. Before I let you go, just on camp use, once again, what has been the reaction from your camp parents? They've got to be excited about that, I would assume. Oh, they are. I think they're feeding off my enthusiasm, honestly. <laughs> so we had open house uh, in the springtime. And all right, we, so we actually had open house was the Sunday pickup day of our team camp. So, nice. the, so the system was still up and running and we had it kind of like in the corner of our main lodge area, um, you know, it was kind of the medical area. You know, some of the parents that I knew earlier, I'm like, look at this. This is amazing. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It really but Yeah, I know. So they, they 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 know. I mean, they I mean I think everybody felt safe before, but any extra layer of safety that you can add to this just opens it up to have, you know, to let it all hang out and have more fun, which is really the it's really the whole idea. Make those lifelong friendships, have a support system. So when things aren't going great, you know, you have somebody to call and you know, it all starts with really getting them in the door at camp. Yeah. So much has changed in diabetes. We are so used to following our kids and seeing numbers 24-7. I assume that your camp does not share all the time with parents once the kids come to camp. How do you manage that with the parents? How do you explain to the ones who have seen the numbers since the very first day of diagnosis that it's going to be okay for the week? Um, yeah, it's constant reassurance. So, you know, we do not allow sharing, although there is actually a glitch in the system that allows a very specific program to bypass my ability to block you. So we had a couple of parents that had that system in place that could see their kids' numbers, but chose not to. Smart. But yeah, it is hard. We actually had a kid years ago whose mother stowed away a phone and hid it in her backpack. And she had a an artificial low where she had kind of rolled over onto her CGM at night. And her mother called the police <gasps> and had them come to camp because 
her blood sugar was too low for her liking. Oh. Um, so that was a fun call to get in the middle of the night or uh, with a policeman standing at my door, actually. But overall, I think um, but that's part of the process. That's part of the respite piece for us is making sure that parents you know, understand that we are watching their kids 24 hours a day. You know, we do have systems in place to kind of keep them safe. And I think once they go away and they come back and they see that their kid was fine and the kid, you know, has made a new friend or had a great experience, then they don't want to look over our shoulder any longer. Yeah. It's the first week is tough, but I do think it gets easier from there. I wanted to also ask, you have a family connection to diabetes, to type one, but it's not really why you got into pediatric endocrinology, right? Can you talk a little bit about, I guess, first, like, why did you choose this specialty? I know you're not in it for the money and the glamour. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. So so my dad uh, was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in his 40s when I was a first year medical student. So I went away to medical school and I came back for Thanksgiving and he had lost about 30 pounds from like 160 to 130 pounds. And I was aware of diabetes, but I never lived with him with diabetes. But it was really as I started to, uh, you know, get more into medicine, I can, my brain really works well. I love math and I love, you know, kind of cause effect um, type of stuff. So um, treating diabetes in particular, but other endocrine conditions, they really excited me. And then, you know, as I got a little bit further in and I needed to make a, a a career choice The, you know, some of the doctors that I was working with at the time who are endocrinologists, I really respected. And so I asked them if they'd take me on as a fellow, which they did. And, and the rest is history. I, you know, I, I can't see my life or career without taking care of kids with diabetes. Was your dad correctly diagnosed? Because quite often that's such a, you know. No, mis- no, he wasn't. He was started on metformin for a couple of weeks and got sicker and sicker and sicker. And then was put on insulin, I think within about two weeks. Yeah, because most adults, uh, they're not thinking about type 1. They're thinking about type 2. Yeah. But he went through that progression. But, you know, he was he was never overweight. He was, I think it was pretty obvious once they uh, once they figured it out. And has so, he come to diabetes He's 80 camp? now. Oh, I was just going to say, has he come to diabetes camp? <laughs> he comes to visit sometimes. Or not anymore. <laughs> so he's he's 80. But he also has a, you know, he has a closed loop system. And I'm his, uh, I'm his tech support. Or my, I should say I'm my, my mother's tech support. Uh, <laughs> she... She was trained as a nurse and she got a patient, uh, hasn't practiced as a nurse in probably 50 years, but she has a patient load of one. <laughs> I love it. I, I'm her consultant. Greg, thank you so much for joining me and spending so much time talking about this. All the best with with all the camps, the the teen and the regular and everything that's going on this summer. And, uh, you know, I hope it's a great time as usual. You're listening to Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. More information in the show notes about Camp Views. I'll link back to our previous episode about that. If you're interested in Camp Shorefire, of course, there'll be more info. But really, wherever you live, um, if you can't find a diabetes camp near you, reach out. I'm happy to help. But, but there really is one in every state. Many independent camps, many ADA, American Diabetes Association camps. And there are even a couple of day camps. We have a three-day program here in the Charlotte uh, area that is just fantastic, especially for the very little kids who aren't really ready for an overnight away and for some older kids whose parents may not be ready. (laughs) This is likely the first time since 2010 that I don't have a kid at any camp. I mean, Benny went to camp last year, but he worked at camp. He worked as a lifeguard all last summer at Camp Coleman. And that's the the regular non-diabetes camp he's attended for years and years. But this year, he says he's going to lifeguard closer to home, which makes me very happy because he was gone for 10 weeks last summer. And he went to diabetes camp at age seven, which really helped him get ready to do these very independent things like going away to regular sleepaway camp for a month. But both of my kids have always gone to camp. And it's wild to think about not having to prep anything this summer. That's I just realized that I have no name tags, no camp medical forms. <laughs> I'm kind of sad. No, I'm, I'm kind of happy. Camp really is an incredible experience. So please join me, I'll segue into that, for our webinar coming up on February 7th, all about diabetes camp. You can register. There's a link in the show notes, and I hope to see you there. Thanks to my editor, John Buchanan from Audio Editing Solutions. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Stacey Sims. I'll see you back here soon. Until then, be kind to yourself.
Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged. Diabetes doesn't always have to interrupt your day. Dexcom G7, a continuous glucose monitoring system, sends your glucose numbers to your phone or receiver. Know where you are and where you're headed without finger sticks and without interruptions. Dexcom G7 is the most accurate CGM, and it's covered by Medicare. Learn more, go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Dexcom logo. Finger sticks required if symptoms or expectations do not match readings. See user guide for instructions. Data on file must meet coverage criteria. For full prescribing information on risks and benefits, visit Dexcom.com.